All right, what happens when you mix um, card playing and writing? You get an incredible novel written by James Swain uh, called Loaded Dice. Uh, and we, you've been here before with your last novel, right? Th yes, thank and you for which, having me back. Which uh, was also a great reading. And, uh, and this has got to be, you know, must-read beach reading. Because once again, it's about what the inner workings of casinos, um, uh, married with, uh, with a great mystery and a detective and, um, and scams. And, and scams. And, and, yeah, <laughs> lots of excitement. And, and the scams that you write about in your book are really... Real, real scams are based on real, real stories, right? Real people, real scams. Um, a number of crossroaders have helped me with the writing of the book, retired crossroaders. And so long as I hide who they are and when these took place, they have no problems with me talking about them. And this is the fourth book in the series, and I, I think it has the best scams I've ever, I've ever seen. There's one early on in the book called Deadlock, which is a blackjack cheating scam, and it's pretty remarkable. What, what, what makes a good scam? Well, I th part of it has to be the mechanics and, and the, the cheater or cheaters have to have it well rehearsed. But each scam has to have what I call a soul. It has to have something about it that just basically fools you in a way like a magic trick would fool you. Um, and very often it's psychology. Very often it's uh, just working something that um, you know, I have... I, I, I'll do an example for you if you'd like to see it. Yeah, no, I'd love to see okay. it. Okay, yeah. And this is a, a good example. Um, this is a, a proposition scam. It uses, I've got $1,000 here. Right. Ben Franklin. And it's done at the dice table. And I would use an accomplice. Uh -huh. You'll be my accomplice, okay. okay? And you're shooting dice. Now, I come up to the table. I show the money. And, and there's a lot of action at the table. And as you're getting ready to throw the dice, I lean forward to the proposition bets, and I say to the boxman, money plays the field, meaning will you accept this bet? And if there's a lot of action, a lot of the boxmen will accept the bet. So accepting the bet meaning putting cash on the putting table Putting cash on the table chips. instead of chips. And money plays the field, and the boxman says yes. And for people out there who don't know, a field bet is if you roll a 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, or 12, I get paid even money. And as I start to drop the money on the field bet, you yell out something that's very common. Watch your hands. Uh -huh. And you toss the dice, and I pull back. So just, Ed, would you okay. just toss those? Yeah. Okay? Watch your hands. I pull back, right. and we get a 10. Now, we won. So if we win, I'm going to show you in a second what happens if we win. But let's pretend we didn't win. Let's pretend that you rolled an eight and we lost. Mm -hmm. Well, I drop the money down. But what happens is when they look at the money, it's a hundred dollar bill and a bunch of ones. Uh -huh. The hundreds got copped in my hand. Right in front, right in plain view, as we like to say, got hidden in plain sight. Now let me explain how that worked because there's a very it interesting. Like it's a timing. Uh, mechanism. It's timing, yeah. but there's also a very interesting principle that's used with it. Now, first of all, oh, and for those who are people wondering, what happens? You know, you did roll a ten. What happens if we roll a ten? Well, the bills are hidden. The nine hundred are hidden under here, and they're folded, and that's hidden by my finger, so I can casually flash these. If you do roll a winning combination, I simply throw all the money down. Nothing happens, and we get paid on a thousand and nine dollars. Right. But if you throw a losing combination, here's what happens: I come up, and I drop this, and this hand goes down. Now, why don't they see that? Why don't they see my hand come down? Because what you would then do, because you're next to me, is you'd pinch these and stick them in your pocket. So when my hand would come back up, it would be clean. Uh -huh. The reason that very often the surveillance people don't see this and the people at the craps pit don't see it is because of this principle. Two moving objects, one fast and one slow. The eye must watch the fast object. And this dates back to when we lived in caves. Mm -hmm. There were things that could eat us, like cheetahs. Right. We were the primary food source for cheetahs. So if something's coming at you really fast and another thing's coming kind of slow, you will watch the fast one. Right, sure. And that's what this scam is based on. And most past posting scams are also based on this at roulette and other places where people are placing a late bet or trying to take something away. Something else is happening.
It's getting your eyes for that brief moment. Are, are, are scams as prevalent today as they have been in the past, or, or yes or no, and, and if they, yes, or, or are they becoming more sophisticated? I think they are more prevalent today than they were. I think the previous scams in the past, there were a lot of really sophisticated sleight-of-hand people who would come to the tables and muck cards and do things uh -huh. like that. But today we're dealing with computers, we're dealing with um, people who have access to technology that is extraordinary. Um, on March 16th, a group of three, I believe they were Serbians, were in a casino in London with a cell phone. And they won 1.3 million pounds in two days playing roulette. Now, Albert Einstein said the only way you can win at roulette is by stealing chips. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of what they were doing. The cell phone had a laser scanner. And one of them was pointing it at the roulette wheel, as, and he was tracking the speed of the ball and the speed of the wheel. The information was being sent to a microcomputer. The person was instantly, who had the computer, be able to determine which half of the wheel the ball would probably fall in. The gentleman with the cell phone was pushing a button. It was appearing on the screen. He was telling his two cohorts where to bet, and they were placing the bets very quickly. Amazing. Now, in, in, in London, they don't have a law against this. They're now rewriting the laws. <laughs> yeah. We do here. Sure. But I, uh, just the cell phones, I think, pose a huge threat to the casinos. Mm -hmm. And you have this incredible mechanism that's uh, very complex. It's just like uh, several thousand dollars, I guess, to make it. Yes, yeah. well, to buy them, if you right, can yeah. find one. Um, this is called Jacob's Ladder. And it's, and I, I'm, I'm going to go give a little history, if I may. In the 1890s, there was a man named Keplinger who had this body harness he used to wear that would allow him to secretly hide a playing card up his sleeve and it would be delivered into his hand. And he got caught by three other gamblers with this. And instead of beating him up, they made him make Keplinger holdouts for them. And so a cottage industry was born. But it was a crazy device. I own one, and I've never really been able to work it. Years later, someone came up with this called Jacob's Ladder, and they have been improved upon, improved upon, and this is the 2002 version. It has Velcro slat, um, strips, mm -hmm. it is worn underneath the jacket, and simply by pressing down, like so, Maybe. card is delivered into the hand, and, and then <laughs> <Just> goes up. <laughs> then if we need to get rid of it, like that, <laughs> wow. a man named Jim Keller probably the top security person here uh -huh. in Las Vegas, told me a story that he once had a blackjack dealer start screaming. And he ran to the table and he said, what's wrong? And the dealer said, that man has, it was a female dealer, she said, that man has a mouse up his sleeve. And she had seen the light reflecting on the Jacob's ladder and thought it was a live animal. Well, needless to say, they <laughs> apprehended him and they found right. this. You never know. That's part of the problem in doing something illegal. You never know how you can really get caught.